Al Ghaybat al Sughra. Then you have scholars like Kulaini in the 4th century. You have scholars like Saduq, the end of the 4th century. You have scholars like At Tusi Al Mufid in the 4th and 5th centuries. Many of these scholars basically they dedicated specific books to Islamic law. So Al Kulaini, for example, all those hadiths that were out there, he organized them in one book called Al Kafi. He organized it into chapters the chapter on Salah, chapter on Khums, chapter on Hajj, you know, a chapter on so and so. He organized all of that for the Shia community so they can refer to the laws of the religion of Islam. Now you find later, but Al Kulaini, what he did, he would bring the actual text of the hadith. He wouldn't paraphrase or you know insert his own words. When you open the book of Kafi, you only see hadiths. You know, chapter of Salah, Al Imam Sadiq said this, Al Imam Sadiq said that. Later scholars, they realized that the average person, the layman, especially people who were not originally Arab and they had maybe difficulty understanding the complexities of the Arabic language, they realized that the average person is not understanding these hadiths. You know, you can't just give a book that has 16,000 hadiths like the book of Kafi to the average person and tell him, here, this is your religion. They don't understand these hadiths. So what later scholars did at the time of Saduq and onward, so we're looking at the 4th and 5th century of the Hijrah, they started to write books on Islamic law. Initially they were short books. So they would take the hadith, they would summarize them, paraphrase them and write them in their books. As Shaykh al Tusi, for example would do that. You will find that he was very instrumental in taking Islamic laws from hadith and delivering it to the average person. Before that really you needed to be a scholar to understand Islamic law for you to go through 16,000 hadiths to understand Islamic law, you had to be a scholar. After a shaykh al tusi you no longer had to be a scholar to understand Islamic law because he wrote simple books for the average person. You take a shaykh al tusi you look at his book, you look at his book and he just sim summarizes for you Islamic laws. So the Rasala that we see today, you know, the book of rulings by the Maraja, that really started during the time of shaykh al tusi before a Shaykh al Tusi, you did not have any book of rulings. All you had is what? Book of hadiths. It's after that era that we see the scholars issuing book of rulings. And hence, the first followed marja or scholar was a Shaykh al Tusi pretty much. Before that, you know, Al Kulaini, for example, he was not really followed because you just take his book, you read the hadith. As Shaykh al Tusi, he started paraphrasing, he started issuing his own fatwas based on what he understood from the hadith. So people started to follow him. So if you ever wonder about the marja'iyya system, how it started, yes, the Imams did train people like Zurara, like Muhammad ibn Muslim, to be, you know, uh, mini marjas, let's call them at the time, where they would issue some fatwas that did start at the time of the Imams. But it really accelerated after Shaykh al Tusi, where now the people they had to follow a scholar to go back to his books and read his rulings because they could no longer take thousands of you know, hadith and try to figure out laws on their own. So we see that you know, Islamic law really accelerated after Shaykh al Tusi.